Cooney, middle-aged American living in New Jersey near the Lincoln Tunnel. If you were to visit my website, you type Howdy Duty into Google. You'll find the correct spelling of the famous puppet. You then combine Tom Duty in a Google search for my site. I'm in New York City, about to enter the Oculus. I'll probably pause this several times, continue recording as I go. I had a simple mending job on the pants I'm wearing now. So I didn't wear them yesterday. I've been wearing them. My deliveries and these coins fell out of my my uh, pocket on the right my the front pocket on the right hand side. And now I wear these folded over so the coins didn't drop. I didn't lose them. They they caught where I bind my pants at, at uh, my knees. And I do that for bicycle riding, so I don't um, connect the. I don't grind up my pants in the mechanics of the bicycle. So so it was a simple mending job. I, I uh, took the pants this morning and I folded, I, you know, grabbed the pocket from the inside, folded it over, needle and thread, manual, and, and then I showed Hannah. And I said, guess who taught me how to do this? And of course, it was my mother. So I made this promise to myself when David died that if I felt fine, I wouldn't feel bad that I wasn't sad. You know, there's this there's this old tradition, and I think it's Christian, where a grieving widow is supposed to wear black for a year. Now, this might just be folklore, and I don't know anyone who's done this, the, the wearing black for a year, but the concept is that sadness is with you for a year, and you respect the dead by being sad. And I hadn't thought about it till my firstborn son died, but when I thought about it, I thought it was stupid. So here I am, my mother has died. And the same thing is true. When I feel okay, I, I don't deny it. And when I feel sad, I don't deny it either. So here I am almost two months after my mother died. And this memory of sewing has just triggered this deep sadness. So in, in, in a nearly tragic and comical way, we did not have one obituary for my mother. We had two, one written by my sister, Ellen, and one written by my sister, Anne, which is appropriate, uh, which is predictable, given the way my siblings interact. We're a loving family and gather in some ways, and yet we're isolated and independent in other ways. So this idea that Martha needed two different obituaries is, is uh, predictable. Now, in reality, they were not that different. And one of the things that was exactly the same is my sister's choice of the word seamstress. And we never thought of my mother as a seamstress when she was gaining the stripes as a seamstress. We just knew our mother so. So in her early days of sewing, all the sewing she did was for people in the house, including herself. Mending, which I've learned to do, and more significant projects like dresses for my sisters and, as I put in my tribute, frostline kits. Yes, my mother was able to make a down coat. And that includes putting the feathers from these bags that Frostline would sit and inject them into these tubes of nylon that had been flat nylon when they came out of the kit, but became tubes at the hands of my mother. And my sisters learned how to do this also. They were uh, capable sewers themselves. I don't think any of them would call themselves a seamstress, but nonetheless, they were, they were quite skilled. And my brother and I, I'm guessing, are probably about tied. If he can't sew a button and mend a pocket like I just did recently, I'd be very surprised. But at the same time, it's not the kind of thing, given the skills of our mother, this is not the kind of thing we brag about. So I'm pretty sure all five of us have some basic skills in sewing. And I'm also pretty sure none of us 
achieve the level of our water. So now I'm dead center in the oculus. And if I look up to the ceiling, the spine of this building runs overhead. And then if I look side to side, the escalators are on the right and on the left, putting the epicenter of the oculus. The building was designed by Santiago Calatrava, the famous architect who also designed it a building that was realized in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So I'd kind of planned to be here in this extraordinary building, artistically inspired, the hoping inspiration would come. So here's a story that wasn't in my mother's tribute that I did within a week of when she died. And that is this idea, how am I going to do that? I can do that. I can do that. How am I going to do that? So as any young kid thinks, their mother can do anything. And certainly my mother could do anything. <laughs> but I also, looking back, I realized in hindsight, my mother reached her limit. Her sewing turned into professional drapery. And what we now look back and consider her a seamstress and I went with her at a time, at a time in my life that I describe like a, like a house pet. And that's not to berate my status in the family, it's to illustrate the demands on my schedule. My friends were in the neighborhood. Now, even though I was school age and maybe five to eight during this period, my school age friends were school friends and my neighborhood friends were my friends. And so it was family and neighborhood friends that ever had um, an expectation that I'd be part of whatever they were doing and they would be part of what I was doing. So my point in this phrase is I didn't have my own friends yet. I had not gone through puberty. I was probably a few years away and, and girls were not even on the horizon. And I was like a family pet. My mother come out, I'd play with my friends after school, come on, Tommy, let's go. I didn't need to know where, I just went. And one of the many times I went with her on her sewing um, visits was to a nursing home. Now my memory is foggy and it was a childhood memory and I can't be quite sure, but you know, the number of rooms in this nursing home might have been in the triple digits. And my mother bid on the job and oh shit, she got it. Oops, my mother didn't say shit, she said sugar. Oh sugar, she got it. Now seamstress Martha, with all the demands on her time, and, and my older brothers and sisters were still around, my brother and three sisters were still around, demands on her to run a house were significant, and yet here she was in the sewing room, which in most house layouts would have been a master bath, but in, but in the duty house, this was the sewing room and that was probably the premeditation plan of my mother. So here she was sewing away and honestly, she had to be over her head. The number of draperies she made would typically be done by a business with multiple machines and full-time employees. But yet she had one machine, one sewing machine, and she was the only one. And she's also a mother. She's also bidding the jobs, taking her phone calls, and doing everything else in the years that led up to this uh, professional career as a uh, med medical sales. So that's the moment. I can do that. I can do that. How am I going to do that? My mother could do anything. And she did. She completed the job. Was it on budget? Was it on time? Did she make any money? It is not important. <laughs> the truth is, was it on time? Maybe not. Was the client satisfied? Probably. Did she make any money? Sure, a little bit. Now this is the part I'm gonna state as if it's fact. And it is, it, it, I don't even know if anyone else would have a memory of this. And of course Martha would, but Martha is dead. Bill is dead and my siblings attention was elsewhere at the time. But as I remember it, Martha <laughs> never did a job that big again. So again, my mother, could my mother do anything? You bet she could. <laughs> was she dumb enough to do it again? No. 
so that's a more expanded story about my mother sewing that didn't fit in her tribute. Um, and quite honestly, I forgot I would have done an abbreviated version of it. And here I am in the Oculus. And I just noticed that I have to credit the designer for this, Santiago Calatrava, for this beautiful blue accent color. Now it's the subway signs, the elevator signs, the fire extinguisher sign, the escalator signs, and they're just placed where they need to be. And it just creates striking beauty to this remarkable place. Now the other blue sign is Path Trains to New Jersey, which is my home. So it's been Tom Duty, middle-aged American living in New Jersey near the Lincoln Tunnel. If you were to visit my website, you would type howdy, duty into Google. You'll find the correct spelling of the famous puppet. You then combine Tom 